If you've seen our award-winning movie, Audacity, I'm sure you enjoyed the scenes with impersonations from Australia's Got Talent finalist, Ben Price. The video you're watching is Ben's full comedy routine, which we couldn't fit into the film. It also includes some powerful closing words from Ray Comfort. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Comfort with a Price. All right, everybody, we're going to keep this going. Please, by the way, remember to uh, trip your waitresses, try the veal. I wanted to say that so bad. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Our next act is not Gallagher, but he does spit a lot, so people cover up. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> he doesn't spit that much. All right. All the, you guys, this is like, this is like the big kaboom. This is going to be a special treat. I don't know if you realize this, but there's actually an Australian idol. Are you familiar? They've got Australian Idol. And then there's Australia's Got Talent. They're basically the same shows that here is a just different time thing. And they're both upside down. But <laughs> this guy, his Zoom to fame was, be, what was the name of the show? Was it America's Got Talent? No, Australia's Got Talent. Australia's Most Wanted. Please welcome Ben Price, everybody. Thank you. How y'all doing? How y'all? It's great to be here. I'm super excited. I don't even know why I'm talking like that. I'm Australian. Good evening. G'day. How is everyone? It is good to be here. Thank you. You are such a warm audience. I've met a few of you guys already. I met someone today. They said, where's your accent? For you? you got the funniest accent. Where are you from? I said, well, I tried to sort of say, well, I'm from somewhere where there's really dangerous creatures and they can kill you. Oh, you're from Compton. <laughs> I'm from Car <laughs> I've been getting used to the roads here. It's been unusual because, um, well, driving on the other side, um, you know, intentionally, of course, but I was driving. <laughs> I've got this GPS, and uh, I've, I've got the Bear Grylls GPS. You know, Bear Grylls from Man vs. Wild? We're driving along. When, you, when you're in these parts of East LA, you don't want to get out of the car. <laughs> they say a man is beaten every five minutes. <laughs> I feel sorry for that man. He must be in so much pain. <laughs> But luckily, I've got vitamins and I've got protein and it's all packed in a can of alphabet soup. <laughs> and I don't want to drop it on the ground or it could spell disaster. <laughs> it probably would. Uh, I don't know how many people know The Simpsons. I've got the uh, Homer Simpson GPS. You'll be driving along the 71. <laughs> We're going to take the next exit on the left. Wait, was it the left? Or was it the right? Hang on, think. Rain? What are we going to do? I don't know, just stop here for some donuts. Mm, donuts, is there anything they can't do? <laughs> Who wants to come for a drive with me? <laughs> uh, we're now going to Ray Comfort on the Comfort Zone to uh, someone who really does tell it as it is. Okay, welcome back to the <laughs> Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. And okay, my name is Easy and your name is Hard. Uh, <laughs> Ray, we're going to have a look at this clip of you down at Huntington Beach, and you, you got to share the gospel with Sean Connery. That's right. Have a look at this. Sean Connery, tell me something. Um, I've got a little uh, tongue twister for you. How about this? Can you say what's on the... Oh, yes, this is a very difficult one. Yes, so, uh, boy, let me see. Uh, she, she shall see shells by the, by the sea. I can't... <laughs> Let me ask you, have you ever stolen anything? Uh, well, I, have uh, stolen a lot of ladies' hearts over the years in my moments. Well, that makes you a thief. Oh, boy. You ever looked at a woman with lust? Uh, well, I think I just answered your question, yes. Okay, well, that was great, Ray. How did it end up? Yeah, he was a little shaken, but not stirred. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I think Ray's going to meet a lot of people. Uh, I, I don't know if he meets, you know, people like Barack Obama, you know. You, you think you're a good person, Barack? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> My approval rating says uh, 42%. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd love it if he met George. I mean, I, I used to love George. I used to love Bill Clinton, you know. <laughs> when Bill Clinton was handing over, you know, to George, he was like, I'm going to show you around the Oval Office here. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to sit in the corner. <laughs> George, we're, we're working a fan. 
I'd, I'd love it if he was trying to fix the whole global recession. You know, he'd be like, it's good to be here. We're going to uh, economize the world and uh, <laughs> we're going to economify and uh, stim stimulificate. Uh, we're going to fix this KFC. Well, won't happen overnight. Uh, you know, they say Paris wasn't built in a day, and uh, when, when Michelangelo painted the 16th chapel, <laughs> took a long time. <laughs> the funniest one that, I, I love it, he actually said this one, he actually said, rarely is the question asked, is our children learning? <laughs> actually said, most of you got that. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some people from Arkansas going, yeah, that's a good question. You know? <laughs> no, I, I'm not having a go. I, just, I mean, I did, I met one guy from there. He was like, you know, he got really excited, you know, because I don't know who I'm talking like now, but yeah. <laughs> he got really excited. He said, I'll finish the jigsaw puzzle in a week. I said, wow, yeah, it said three to four years on the box, you know? <laughs> just saying. All right. <laughs> but uh, thank you. The. Uh, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's, he's done a movie recently with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Sylvester's like, you're wondering, you know, uh, would you like a, you know, would you like a cameo in my latest movie? And Arnie's like, I'm too busy for a cameo. But how about a small part? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're getting, we're getting pretty old now. That's right. And for me, instead of saying lines like, I'll be back, it's, ah, oh, my back. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I tell you, I, I want to use these action heroes to ring up call centres. Do call centres annoy you? We, we get call centres ring us in Australia. I don't know if it's the same here. I get, I, 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 Indians must love me because I have one ring me every second day. <laughs> I had a guy, no, this guy rang me up the other day. He's like, excuse me, Mr Price. <laughs> I thought it was my friend doing King Julian. I'm like, oh, the New York Giants. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Oh. Oh, throw your hands in the air. <laughs> it was one of those calls. He said, are you interested in doing our short survey? <laughs> I said, I'm not interested. OK, question number two. <laughs> Why not? I'm not interested. Number three, would you ever consider? No. <laughs> Thank you, come again. <laughs> I, I want to ring him up like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or no, in fact, I would love to go even one step further. I'd love to ring him up as Liam Neeson from Taken. Could you imagine getting on the phone saying, oh, help someone, it's the right way. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But I have a very particular set of skills that make me a nightmare for people in call centers. <laughs> if you stop ringing my home during a dinner time, that'll be it. I won't look for you. I won't pursue you. But if you don't, I will hunt you down. I will find your call center and I will kill you. <laughs> Good luck, sir. Oh, I'm going to do that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I mean, no one else, no one else could have done that role like Liam. He was perfect, Liam Neeson. I, I, would you agree? I, I don't know. He, he possibly was the first choice to play. I don't know if you guys know, but there's a lot of first choices to play certain movie roles. They remade uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a few years ago. Uh, Johnny Depp got the role. Robert De Niro was asked to play the role of Willy Wonka. True. Can you imagine Robert De Niro, Willy Wonka? Hey, listen, listen to me, Charlie. Hey. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Hey, don't, don't, me don't mess with me. You are good. Yes, you, you, yes, you are. Yes, you, yes, you are. You gotta get, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I am watching you. Hey, thank you. Hey. Don't, don't make me go back there. Don't make me get me. I don't want to get my Oompa Loompas out. Otherwise, it's Oompa Loompa. Don't put D's. If you're not wise, I'll break both your knees, OK? Thank you. Thank you. He, he was the first choice to play. Robert De Niro could do anything. I mean, he could be on Dancing With Us, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Imagine dancing with all the stars. And we've got, well, we've got all the stars here in the, the backstage room. We've got Christopher Walken, who, uh, <laughs> you've got an unusual, what, what kind of dance? Excuse me, hello. My dance for this week is the hockey pokey. <laughs> you put your left hand in, you put your left hand out. Your left hand in, and you shake it all about. 
do the hokey pokey, you turn around. Wow, that's what it's all about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, wow. Uh, Mr. Bean's here, ladies and gentlemen. How many people know Mr. Bean? You're, you're doing a bit of dance. Oh, I'm going to be dancing. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> where, where was Mr. Bean when they had the auditions for the role of Batman? <laughs> Batman's always had a voice that's really hard to understand. You know, you know who they needed to get? Someone who's got a really good voice. Someone like James Earl Jones, the voice of Mufasa. Yeah, that, that's a good voice. I, I was at a Christian bookshop. This is true. I saw you can get the whole Bible audio version by James Earl Jones. It, it, can you imagine the whole Bible? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> Now we turn to the book of Luke. I am your father, Luke. <laughs> I mean, he's got a good voice, yeah. Oh, there, there's all sorts of, you know, the Jack Nicholson Bible, that's... And the truth will set you free. <laughs> Unless you can't handle the truth. <laughs> that, that's what I'd like to... A any others you'd like to see? Who else? Who else would do a good version? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman could... He'd, he'd read... And now we're going to read the genealogy of the book of Jesus. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what happened then because you just want to hear my voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was good. Wait, who else? Eddie Murphy would be great. Who else? No, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll finish with it. You know what I'd love to see? A little trailer for a movie called, I'll, I'll call it The Twelve Disciples. Imagine we're in the movies now and you see something a little bit like this. In fact, exactly like this. <laughs> this is the story of 12 ordinary men whose lives were changed by one extraordinary man and The Twelve Disciples, starring Russell Crowe as Simon Peter. <laughs> yeah, mate, I was just, uh, I cut the ear off one of the Raymond soldiers. Uh, I knew it was the wrong thing to do, but I apologized to the guy. He didn't listen. <laughs> he couldn't listen. Tom Cruise as Thomas. Hey. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, you're telling me he's alive? <laughs> hey, wait, no, hang on. Show me the nail marks. Show me the nail marks. Show me. And not be messy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Arnold Schwarzenegger as John. It's fantastic. I was writing the book of Revelation. It was on the Isle of Patmos. It was fantastic. It was all about the end of the days. It was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> the best part was when he said, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Donkey, Shrek, and Puss in Boots as the rest of the disciples. Oh, Lord, it is you. You are alive. It has been an honor to serve with you. All right, back to our fishing now. Okay, we're going to catch those fish over there far, far away. Oh, what are you talking about? Man, he's alive, man. It's so exciting, man. I mean, he was dead on a Friday. But, man, he's alive now on a Sunday. I'm so excited, man. This is the happiest day of my life, man. Now we'll just get some waffles. <laughs> The Twelve Disciples, coming soon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to recommend all of you guys to other comedians because you're fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell, I'll tell everyone in Australia all about you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring Ray here in a moment. I just wanna tell you guys, uh, I'm so excited to be a part of this film. I, I, I love, no, I'm passionate about comedy, but even more passionate about Jesus, as you can see. And so I, I, I love the gospel. The gospel is the most beautiful and the most brutal thing in my life, but I, I love it. And I'm, I'm so happy to be involved in something like this. And uh, I, I could tell you my whole life story. But uh, I do wanna say, a few years ago, God spoke to me. It was almost like Dr. Phil speaking to me to say, because I would go to church all my life. I used to go to Bible study. I used to read the Bible. I thought I was a pretty good person. And you'd look at me and you go, you're not too bad. You're not the worst of the worst. Uh, but I knew that I had to just 
give everything of my life over to God. And it felt like at one point, God just saying to get real. I, I was chasing the dream of being the world's most famous comedian. I wanted to be in, well, we're in a movie. <laughs> we're in Audacity. I wanted to do all that stuff. I wanted to be pursuing that. But I really knew that, you know, I, I looked at the scriptures where it says, Whoever, whosoever tries to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will find it. And that's where I came to the point, just saying, God, my life belongs to you, whatever you want. And it was like, from that point on, where God just said to get real. And uh, I'm, I'm going to let Ray explain a little bit more of the gospel, but I, I could tell you a lot more. But uh, if God can awaken a comedian and uh, use the foolish things to shame the wise, you know, I, I want God to challenge you guys as well. But I'm going to pass on to Ray. And thank you so much, guys. God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Um, someone asked what my accent is. I trust you can figure the difference between an Australian and a New Zealand accent after listening to Ben. Australians talk more like this, don't they, mate? Okay? Um, so I'm from New Zealand, the guy that asked. New Zealand is down under, we walk around upside down. We have summer when it's winter here, winter when it's summer here. We celebrate Christmas in the middle of summer and we walk around singing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas and we really mean it. But New Zealand has a population of about 4 million people. There's between 30 and 40 million sheep. But they're not sure of the exact amount because the guy that counts them keeps falling to sleep. <laughs> but I was born twice in New Zealand, so I'd like to share for a few moments a little bit about my first birth. My mum was Jewish. She married a Gentile. And because I was born just after the uh, Second World War, um, they put Methodist on my birth certificate or the information about my birth. Uh, so I escape another Hitler that arose. So I was given no Christian in or instruction about God or anything through my whole life. At the age of seven, an aunt taught me the Lord's Prayer, which I rattle off out of habit each night. But around the age of 19 or 20, I started to think. I was too busy enjoying myself to think deeply. And this is what I thought. I thought to myself, you know, we're all part of the ultimate statistic. Ten out of ten die. We're like condemned criminals waiting to be executed. Our cell has got a nice big blue roof, good air conditioning, good lighting, but this life is like a holding cell. It was though the whole of humanity was in a line waiting to step off a cliff, and I was waiting for my turn. And the question I had was, any way to get out of this line? And yet nobody talked about death. It was crazy. I thought medical science could help, perhaps, to extend this life. But science was too busy placing a man on the moon to wonder what's going on here on Earth. And I went to a doctor to see if at least I could extend this life by living healthy. I walked into the doctor's room and he was sitting there smoking a cigarette, looking like death warmed up. And he was dead a few years later. So I, I kind of lost hope that there was any chance of breaking out of this prison of death. And I remember one night I sat on a bed, looked at my wife and, and thought, if she died, I'd have nothing to live for. And I cried out, Why? Why? It just seems so futile. I didn't pray. It wasn't a prayer, but God heard my prayer. And six months later, I was on a surfing trip with a buddy. He was a Christian, and he explained to me why we die. We die because we've violated an eternal law. The Bible says, the soul that sins, it shall die. Now, I didn't think I was a sinner until I saw the words of Jesus. He said in Matthew 5, you've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. And I thought to myself, well, if there's a heaven and a hell, I'm fine because I've never committed adultery. But then I saw the words of Jesus. But I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. And I just thought, man, if that's God's standard on judgment day, I'm in big trouble. Because the Bible teaches he sees our thought life. He considers hatred to be murder. Lying is so serious in the sight of God. The Bible says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator, no blasphemer, no liar will inherit the kingdom of God. And I realized on judgment day I'd be condemned and end up in hell. And it was then that I understood the cross. That God became a human being 2,000 years ago, suffered on a cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I violated God's law and Jesus paid our fine. 
That means God can legally dismiss our case. If you're in court and you're guilty and someone pays your fine, the judge can say, this fine's paid, you're out of here. And God can say that with any sinner who repents and trusts alone in Jesus because his sins are washed away. Jesus cried, it is finished on that cross. In other words, the debt has been paid. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God can dismiss our case. He can let us live forever because of the suffering death of Christ. So I repented that night, April the 24th, 1972, 1.30 in the morning, became a new creature, came back to my hometown of the city of Christchurch, city of 350,000 people, and immediately purchased a 34-seater bus and put across one side and 12-inch high professional lettering, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, on the other side. I had a billboard put on the front of our home. I purchased a printing press and began to print literature and my own business, which I used to have when I was 20. I used to have my own business. Someone asked, what do you do for a living? I'd say, I mind my own business. What do you do? Which I did. <laughs> but on the front window, in three-inch high lettering, I had John chapter 3, verses 1 to 16, because I had found everlasting life. You know, I had a moral obligation. I'd witness to everyone I met, not as a wide-eyed fanatic, but just sharing that they could live forever and didn't have to stay in that line. There was a way out if they'd obey the gospel. I even got on a soapbox and began to preach in the heart of our city every day for 12 years. If anyone could have been considered a fanatic in those days, it was me. Today, I'm much worse. (laughs) Because I've found everlasting life. And I gotta tell you, everything looked different. The flowers blossomed to his glory. The trees raised their arms in his praise. The birds sung his praises each morning. I was different because God had made me a new creature in Christ and caused me to love that which I hated. Now, I used to have a surf shop. I didn't look like this. Look, matching belt, matching pants. When I was a surfer, the idea with surfers is to look as much like seaweed as you can. (laughs) I had sun-bleached hair on my shoulders, bright turquoise shirt, white flowers, orange corduroys. That's why I was surprised when a 91-year-old Presbyterian minister walked into my surf shop and said, I hear you've become a Christian. He reached out his hand, he shook my hand, he left $10 in it. I liked that man from the moment I met him. (laughs) You gotta realize, this was, I was counterculture. I was hippie. And this was a 91-year-old Presbyterian minister in a three-piece suit coming in to befriend me. And we became the closest of friends for the next few years. One day his wife called and said, George is about to die. Would you come and be with us at this time? And I said, sure. Went around to his house, she was on the phone, let me in, the phone was right by his bedroom door, had a loud ring because George was partly deaf. She ushered me into his room, I sat next to him, he was in bed and he says, is that you, Ray? I said, yeah, George, I've come to be with you at this time. He says, I'm gonna be with Jesus. And I thought, how incredible that I have the privilege of being present when a saint goes marching through to glory. Now, a saint isn't someone with a plate on the head 3,000 years ago and fat babies with wings on flying shoulder height. That's not a saint. A saint is anyone who's repented and put their faith in Jesus Christ. That's the teaching of the Bible. If you don't believe it, read the Ephesians to the, to the saints at Ephesus or book of Philippians to the saints that are at Philippi. And I was there present when a saint was going marching through to glory. And I sat there for about the next 20 minutes and just kept repeating in my mind, how will he go, Lord? How will he go? And after that 20 minutes, suddenly George raised his hand to the sky, pushed pushed his finger towards the heavens and said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I thought, wow, what a way to go. Suddenly the phone rang, he sat up, and I was the one that just about died. (laughs) He lasted another two years. But when he did go, we sung that great hymn, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done, So Lovely the World. He gave us a son who yielded his life in atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. So we have a glorious gospel. How can we not preach that which we've seen and heard? So every Christian has a moral obligation to stand up and be counted. And that's why we produce this movie. We want God to use this in your hands to reach those neighbors that you've got. So... Let's close this in prayer, shall we? Father, we we thank you for tonight. We thank you that everything went great and we pray that this movie will glorify your name and that you will use it to touch dying sinners and they would truly repent, confess and forsake their sins and pass from death to life because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I got a new way to give out tracks. This is the first time I ever used it, but let's see if 
It works. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, thank you for coming. If you enjoyed this, you're going to absolutely love the award-winning movie, Audacity. The film is about an inspiring comedian named Peter, who's encouraged by his friend Ben, played by Ben Price, to perform at the local comedy club. Stage fright isn't Peter's only fear. When confronted by his coworker Diana about one of today's most divisive issues, homosexuality, he feels compelled to speak, but can he? Audacity uses a unique approach to address a very sensitive topic in contemporary society. Regardless of where you stand on the issue, you'll gain fresh insights and a new perspective. You can find many helpful resources and watch the film free on audacitymovie.com. I don't want to offend you, but I have a sister who's gay. And you don't know the struggle she's been through from people who are telling her that she's going to go to hell for what? Loving someone? Right. And where are these two going to go if I pull the trigger? How come the word homosexuality hasn't been in the Bible until a few decades ago? And if homosexuality is such an abomination, then why is the word abomination used to describe eating shellfish? And if God is love, then why is there so I noticed when I came up, you two were kissing in public. You are obviously gay. What do you think of gay marriage? I love gay marriage. I have a lot of gay friends. I love the gay community. You two married? Um, no, we're not married. Are you we're... thinking of getting married? Yes. And I think everybody should be able to love who they want to love, no matter if you love a woman or a man. Who cares? Gay marriage, I think they should be able to do whatever they want. Love is love. Love has no color. I think that everyone should be free to marry who they want. I just know that I love gay marriage. I love gay people. So what does God think of homosexuality? That's a stupid question. I think he should just stay out of it. I have a lot of gay friends that go to church every Sunday. They believe in God and they're gay. Are they going to burn in hell for being gay? Are people born that way? I believe so. I was. Do you think they're born that way? They're born that way. Sure? No attraction to men? No. And what about you? So ever since the day I was born. You've always had gay tendencies? Always. You've changed your mind? Yeah, you, you just, yeah, you enlightened me real fast. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> does that make sense? That makes, sure, sense. makes sense, yeah. That does make sense. You're very good at this, honestly. This is actually a very good argument. So I've been um, watching the videos that you showed me, like, okay. all day today. But I'm kind of starting to feel a little nervous because it's starting to all make sense. Does that make sense? It does. I have a question for you. Can you tell that I'm a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs>